Peace to the family. Peace to the family. Our community is in fact in a state of emergency. And so, I'm gonna cut straight to the point today. When a black man has an issue with another black man in his community, and it becomes violent. It oftentimes doesn't stop at the point of the fight. Oftentimes, the black man says, we're gonna run down on that other brother. The black man says, I'm gonna pull up on that brother. The black man says, I'm gonna get a group of people and we're gonna go into that other brother's neighborhood that other brother's territory and we gonna get revenge. Such is the case with the black woman. The black woman says, I'm gonna get that B. I know where that B is gonna be. And when the black woman has beef with somebody, she wants revenge and they will run down or find or hunt their own in their own community. That's what they will do. When the white man does the same thing to the black man or the black woman, we don't want revenge. We scream, we want justice. <laughs> Think about that. We want revenge on each other. But when the white man gets involved and he kills us and he beats us, we say, oh no, we don't want revenge. We want justice. Justice from who? Who you want justice from? Oh, the legal system. The same system whereby nine out of every 10 people that's accused of a crime plead guilty. You think that's a coincidence? <laughs> the same system where the legal aid, the court appointed attorney gets paid more money when his client that he has been assigned to by way of the state, the state is taking you to court and they're nice enough to give you an attorney. The state is taking you to court and they're nice enough to make sure you have a court appointed representation. We want justice from the same system that pays the legal aid more money when you plead guilty and no money when you're proven innocent. If the legal aid gets paid more money when you plead guilty and he's behind his mortgage, what do you suppose he will do? How you think he will convince you? You see? You want justice though. You don't want revenge. You want revenge when it's your own, but you want justice when this white man's involved. But justice from who? Can I take you back to Tusla, Oklahoma? In 1921? Where they burnt down our religious institutions, burnt down our banks, <laughs> destroyed our buses, murdered our brothers, our sisters, our children. The greatest massacre incited by racial tensions in American history. Did we ever get justice from that? Or what about our political prisoners of conscience? Like Mumia Abu-Jamal, who the feds were studying him since he was a damn teenager as a journalist. Guilty of no crimes. This is the same system that locked up Brother Meek Mill and everybody said that wasn't right. They trying to keep his ass on parole for the rest of his life. And everybody can't be backed up by Jay-Z. 
But this is the same system you want just, you don't want that. But this generation just doesn't know. I can't say you forgot that which you never was taught. What about Emmett Till? A 14 year old. Not even a man yet. Accused of irate. Accused of thinking. Like he wanted to be in a relationship with a white female. And for that he was kidnapped. For that he was dismembered. Chopped up and murdered. And when they found his body, his mother said, leave the casket open so we can see how swollen and abused this dead body is. That was her child in hopes that we will see the wicked beast for what he and she is. But every time we talk this talk, I guarantee you, we got some black people out here that tell you, stop bringing it up, it's over. You got some white folks out here that's going to tell you, but that's in the past. But our own youth don't even know about Emmett Till. Our own youth don't know there's a 14-year-old chopped up, murdered, kidnapped, just because of the thought that he may have been considering being affectionate towards a white female, allegedly. A 14-year-old, guilty of no crime. Where was the justice? But what's understood need not be explained, right? But how could it be understood if it's never explained? And I see some of y'all right now, crying. Why are you saying this? Are you looking to incite racial tensions? I can't incite that which already existed. Look at you, black man, and you wonder why the black woman wants to have a white man. Because you out there filming the murder of another black man instead of stopping the goddamn thing. Because you think it's against the law to stop a white man from killing a black man if he got a goddamn badge. But I'm inciting racial tensions. I start getting blamed for inciting racial tensions because I want revenge, goddamn it. I don't want no justice. I don't want him to get the easy pass out and go into prison. That's what I don't want. Look at you, black man, scared to freaking death. But I'm going to tell you something. There's one thing we can't stand. If there's one thing we can't stand, it's a black man that wants to be a white man. And the only thing we can't stand more than a black man that wants to be a white man is a black man that wants to be a white woman. We not all blessed to have hair on our head. Most of the planet has fur. We are the only ones that look like nature, look like the trees. I don't teach the hate of others. It just come off like that because I love myself so much. So the only thing we can't stand more than a black man that wants to be a white man is a black man that wants to be a white woman. So if this is too much for you, <laughs> get off the live stream. If this is too hot, Get off the live stream because I'm not going to tone it down today. And no, I don't want you guys to protest any further. I don't want you to fall for the setup. Because this is the purge, anarchy. Just like the movie took place during election year, you got to see the politics. We see bricks being left conveniently during these protests. Brand new clean bricks. They allowing buildings to be burnt down with no police to stop it for hours. This is the purge. Allow them to vent their frustrations. Allow them to let it all off. This is the purge. They letting buildings get burnt down and they putting bricks there conveniently at every protest, state after state after state during election season. You can't see 
that we're playing the role they want us to play in the movie. So when you see that, I'm asking all my brothers and all my sisters, you can hold this W. We can get a win right now if you all just stay in your goddamn houses for another week or two just right now. Stay in your houses. <clears throat> Throw them off. Because you're not going to win because you're disorganized. You did your part. The world knows you're angry. But they're setting the stage so they can have the right to murder you. Because everybody got their hands in this now. White folks are in here fitting their coronavirus frustrations in the middle of our goddamn rights. Negroes is out there robbing and stealing and destroying goddamn stores for their own personal gain, deviating from what the goal is supposed to be. So what you cannot afford to do, like we say in New Covenant Saws, like we do in our community, we say 10T4E. <clears throat> 10 toes down, 4 eyes across. We don't travel and no group smaller than 3. If there's going to be some kind of protest. And one out of the three people got to have a camera. And every one person is assigned to the other two people. 10 T4E, 10 toes down, 4 eyes across. And the reason why it has to be like this is because you need two people assigned to you. And we have to dress in uniform so we can distinguish ourselves from everyone else. We don't go in large public meetings or groupings that we don't help facilitate unless we go out there to organize early before the chaos gets precipitated because we don't know when there's these large groups. What agent has the agenda to covertly be there to incite or further inflammate an already bad situation and implicate everybody there. So we need to take this time out to properly organize. Join New Covenant. People be like, yo, <clears throat> I don't know about. It. No, you, you want to be part of an organization for 24 hours and go back out there and when you get bopped in your goddamn head, you want random people to support you who don't understand how to strategically organize. Make this your opportunity to join someone. If you don't join us, join someone, goddammit. Join somebody. Get some training on how to respond to the worst case scenario and the most immediate one. Everyone in New Covenant, every black man, every black woman is commissioned to get a whole life insurance policy. One that you can borrow against. This thing is talking about insurance? Yes. Political science. If they murder me, my family, my wife, my children, they all get a million dollars or more. If they, murder, if they murder 30 of us, $30 million in checks is getting cut. I guarantee you, they say, yo, look, kill those black people, but them, that's the bag. Don't do that. If every time they killed a black man, they had to pay out a million dollars, they would come up with a new scenario for oppression, a more affordable one. And for every time we go in the hospital, if I, get, if I land in the hospital right now, if I get admitted into the hospital, that's a $5,000 check minimum I'm getting. If I stay there for five days, that's $25,000 they got to cut to me. If a hundred of us find ourselves in the hospital, that's $250,000. If a hundred of us find ourselves in the hospital, that's a quarter million dollar bill. And if a hundred of us find ourselves dead, that's a hundred million dollar bill. And you better believe the family that receives that million plus dollars in insurance from their father dying will invest that money in the liberation of their people. They will be inspired with that money. So we got no business putting ourselves in harm's way where we can be subtracted from our family that relies on us to pay bills. 
our children that rely on us to edify them and prepare them for life. So we strategically need to organize. We strategically need to do the prerequisite steps, take the prerequisite steps before we go out in the world and risk our lives and handicap our families as per their request, as per their intention. And right now, they've allowed this to escalate things to get it this high. They've allowed the disorganized to run amok. They've allowed the emotions to make the cup overflow so they can bring in the military. People talking about they looking to institute martial law. It's been in effect since the coronavirus. What are you talking about? And I can only speculate that if they didn't instigate the situation, if they didn't murder this man with a premeditated ambition, then at the very least, they leveraged this man's death to bring in phase two of the already found martial law that we've been living in since the coronavirus. Wake up and stop saying it's coming. It's already here. It's been here. They've already conditioned us to curfew. You think this coronavirus is real? If it's real, the body count will go up next week because of all these people that haven't been social distancing because they all rioting. State to state to state, everybody will be dropping like freaking flies because no one has been social distancing. They're rioting. The police ain't. The people ain't. And they allowed it any goddamn way. Just a minute ago, Negroes was getting killed for not wearing masks. But they allow protesting in large groups. You may as well open up a goddamn stadium again. And let us watch basketball like we was. We have to stop being so reactionary. <clears throat> we have to learn how to be proactive. When a bottle of water gets shaken up. When you open it up. You remove the top. You see the bottles. You can, you can see the bubbles. You can tell that the bottle was shaken and you put the top right back on. When you shake up a bottle of soda and you open up the soda and you remove the top, the soda spills out. And when you put the top back on it, it's less content in that bottle than it was prior to it being shaken. Well, undoubtedly, our people have been shaken. Undoubtedly, we have been shaken. But are we reactionary like the soda or are we proactive like water? Do we acknowledge the shake, identify with the shake, but do not become less than ourselves, Or do we get caught slipping and become less than ourselves? We are too reactionary. We fall for every play in the book. Your best play right now would be stop going outside. Let them bring in all the military, the National Guard, let them do all of that to no avail. They are anticipating on a mass murder of our people. That's what they are anticipating. You turned up already, you're not organized properly, get out while you can, do not go out there in them streets, do not break no more Store windows. Do not steal no more stuff out the stores. No more vandalism. Go back to normal starting tomorrow. Go back to normal and join a goddamn organization. I don't care if it's not ours. Join something. And start learning how to properly organize. So you can be prepared. Because they will gun another one of us down. It happens quarterly. Stop acting brand new. Don't let everybody get in on our political dissidents. We fighting for a cause here. And yeah, I said I want revenge and I'm not taking it back. I don't want that cracker to go to prison. I don't want him to get off. We let Zimmerman slip. I want us to keep that same energy. I want us to keep that same gangster energy that we be having. 
Keep that same energy that you keep for your brother when you don't let him off the hook when he do wrong by you. Keep that same energy. And damn it, stop destroying your neighborhoods. All over the world, people are protesting on our behalf. Beautiful. All over, nationwide, people are protesting, destroying neighborhoods, vandalizing, breaking glass, lighting things, setting it ablaze. But the damn neighborhood where this white man's from, the grass is still greener than any other neighborhood, and the white picket fences are still up. Not even a splinter has been separated from the wood. For the life of me, I don't know why. We would organize everywhere else on the planet Earth. They even organize in the UK on our behalf. But nobody organizes in the neighborhood of the perpetrators. And we cry for justice. But want revenge when our own people kill us. We want revenge on our neighbor. And we want justice for the stranger. And they make us out to be the violent people. How can a race that's abusing us since time immemorial take us serious? If they know all we would do in the age of social media is film the last breath of a man being murdered by a bold, bold, wicked beast that will look into the eyes of the camera as this man says, I can't breathe no more. How dare we only film? What is the crime in self-defense? So we need to start training. See? When I come out, you say, why he needs security? He needs security from his own people. It's just in general, people. It's security for you, too. Because <clears throat> as I told you, when I come out to speak publicly, you won't never make me out like a Malcolm. I'm going to stay with hitters. And any of you that know me, when I fill up them damn buildings or I hit them streets, don't tell me I'm only on Instagram. You're full of shit if you say it. I, you don't know what it is to be me and be on C-SPAN and CNN. To have snipers on the building and have to stay focused when I'm talking on TV. You don't know what it is. To be out there marching. With black lawyers for justice. And other advocates of peace for the black man and woman. While army tanks are there and police are pushing you and bumping you. Attempting to set shit off while you march en route to tell people come out their projects and walk with me straight to the venue at the local church so I can give it a public address. Yes, that's me in Ohio. Straight after the snipers pointing at me. So don't talk that stupid shit to me that you, oh, oh yeah, when you're gonna go out. Don't talk that to me. You, you cats don't own no fucking guns. I do. Don't talk that stupid shit with me. I can't afford to be amongst the disorganized. Because we're trained to proactively deal with certain distress. So we have discipline. We don't just react emotionally. We gotta just go out there and be with anybody. I don't know where everybody's intention is. I don't see the leadership that can reprimand a brother or sister for being out of order. So I don't organize with the disorganized because any of a number of things can happen. Stop going out there by yourself. And if you go with a group, be uniform. In case you get separated, you can look for someone that looks like you. This is what we teach. Get you an insurance policy. And we'll educate you on the ones that you can use while you're alive. You don't have to die for someone to benefit. You can borrow against the policy and purchase real estate if need be. This is new cabinet SARS. Self-administering reparations. Self-administering reparations. When you ask our brothers and sisters, what do you want to come out of all of this? 
they say justice. What you want is the white man to go to his prison. That ain't our prison, family. That's the white man's prison. Get that shit through your heads. Privatized prisons have a quota to put at least nine out of ten cells in occupancy. To occupy at least nine out of ten cells. Otherwise, they go out of business. It's time to re-up the coronavirus. Messed up the money. It's time to fill up the cells again. We're about to start being opened up. The state's about to open everything up. We got to fill back up the cells. Stop falling for the tricks. When they tell you it's phase one of the coronavirus, it's phase one of their Illuminati shenanigans. Whatever you want to call that shit. Agenda 21, whatever you want to call it. Ain't no way in hell the Simpsons got all this intel about the future. This is a script. And I ain't on no conspiracy theory. It's a damn script. And let me talk to you confused brothers and sisters that's out there. <clears throat> that will look at my eye of Heru. And mock me. Ridicule me. <clears throat> disrespect me. And castigate me. Call me all sorts of names. And let me talk to you guys about that. Because as much as you can undermine my intelligence. Oh I can't understand what you're saying. You got mascara on your face. I don't know what you're saying. I can't take you serious. You can't take the message serious, right? But when a black man wears a teardrop on his face, which would suggest to us he ain't killed no white folks, <clears throat> most likely he killed a black man. Correct? When a brother wears a teardrop on his face, when he tattoos a teardrop on his face, so you can recognize the fact that he murdered another black man. You don't mock him. You don't ridicule him. You don't disrespect him. You don't undermine him. You don't castigate him. You commit his lyrics to memory. But me, you don't understand. Because I may wear some henna or some coal. Me, you don't understand. But you understand the brother... And you respect him for wearing a sign and a symbol that he may possibly hate himself in kind. You respect him and you commit what he says to memory en route to genocide. We are suffering from an acculturation process. And what this means is that we have adopted foreign ideas and foreign cultures as our very own. So of course, the black man and the black woman, when they can't understand the culture that is theirs right before their eyes, the only thing they know to do is to deject it. The only thing they know to do is reprimand the host of that sign or that symbolism. So let me share something with you guys. Because I don't bear the butt of the joke you do for not recognizing your own information. There's something called the contendings of Horus and Set, ancient Kemetic science. Ancient Egyptians would have called themselves the Remetu. And so, Usir or Osiris, which is the Jehovah of your Bible today, was murdered. And we're not saying these people existed. But this is African. This is the mythic apperception of primeval man. And in this mythic apperception of primeval man, and when we study the extracts from the cosmogonical and the eschatological thesis of our Remetio or ancient ancestors, <clears throat> we will learn that there's something called the contendings of Horus and Set. And Set killed his brother, Usir, who you know as Osiris. And Horus, or Heru, is the offspring of the man that got murdered. So he went to war with his uncle as it was a fight for Lower Egypt and Upper Egypt. 20th Dynasty information. They were family. Because I'm going to tell you why I wear this eye. <clears throat> and they went to war. 
and the uncle emasculated the young man, the OG. Stripped them of his manhood like many of the OGs in prison stripped the young men of their manhood in prison. Out of jealousy that they're going to get home before the old guys go home. So they want to keep niggas behind the wall longer. Get them into a fight. So the older head emasculated the young man. Took his nuts from him. His manhood from him. <laughs> Well, pardon me, the younger man emasculated the older man. And the older man took his sight, took his eye out. So one lost his manhood and one lost his clairvoyance, his ability to see. It's called the all seeing eye also. So we have two things going on in our community. A lack of manhood and a lack of fucking vision. Because people's ego get in the way. So family had a feud. And so another family member named Jahuti, who some call Tahuti, which some call Thoth, came in to make sure that they don't go too much further. Healed them a long route to keep balance. As sometimes my aunt is considered the consort or the wife of Tahuti. Kept balance and healed both of these brothers as they continued to fight. And then the divine feminine principle Isis came in, <clears throat> who's known as Arset, whose name means throne comes in and creates the ultimate reconciliation, the mediation between the two family members. So despite the fact that the uncle took this young man's sight, his vision, despite the fact the young man emasculated the older man, undermined his elder out of his anger, took his manhood, Despite the fact his father was murdered, the woman was able to come in there and make them come to terms. And it would never go too far because every time it began to escalate, somebody would step in and create the healing. Tahuti. Jehuti. So why do I wear this eye? <clears throat> because Upper and Lower Egypt eventually was under attack. And it would take... Unity between Upper and Lower Egypt to ward off their enemies. And that would not be so if family continued to feud. If they couldn't transcend, if they couldn't transcend the deaths of their own ignorance, their own anger, their own contention, their own adversity amongst each other. What we learn from this is that the family may feud, but we never stand around and just watch them kill each other to the death. We step in. What we learn from this is the powerful role that the women can play in our intervention, in the mediation. What we learn from this is that no matter what we have done to each other, at no point will we recognize that someone could do more harm than we have done to each other. <clears throat> I wear this because it's a sign of brotherhood. I wear this because it's a sign of reconciliation. I wear this because it tells me no matter how much I hurt you and no matter how much you have hurt me, we still at some point or the other may have to come to terms because there's an enemy lurking that is Posing a greater threat than you or me combined can ever create for each other. So no, I'm sorry fam. I don't take my blood and get a tattoo on my skin and wear signs and symbols of me murdering my own people. I don't have a teardrop on my face to appeal to you so you can pay attention. When I'm in war mode, 
and I know my own people will attempt to tear me down. I wear this sign for me as I talk to you through the screen and see myself. I remind myself for the ignorant rat bastards that are in our community. For the niggas that was created by the ultimate nigger, the nigger maker, the white man. I remind myself that you are the way you are because he is the way he is. And for me to forgive you, because no matter how much harm you wish me and no matter how much harm you have brought about me, no matter how much you gossip, no matter how much you slander, no matter how much you backbite me, I must forgive you because you are the way you are because he is the way he is. So I wear this to remember, love my brother, even if he's off the path. Love my brother, even if he's working against me. Doesn't mean that I'm naive. <coughs> Doesn't mean that. Don't mean I'm going to forget. It just means I can't put you at the top of my priority list when it comes to banking. I can't put you at the top of my priority list when it comes to going to war. At some point or the other, at some point or the other, I will have to subdue my passions. At some point or the other, I have to demonstrate real manhood. And manhood is not about being an alpha male when you're confronted with adversity that can escalate to violence. Manhood is knowing you are no stranger to violence. And manhood is knowing you can perpetrate violence. You have no fear to engage someone violently, but you exercise caution and wisdom and humility when confronted with adversity. That is a harder fight than giving into the temptation of putting hands on your brother. True manhood is the demonstration of humility when you know you are willing to solve your issues violently. True manhood is exercising humility when confronted with adversity. Real men who are not afraid to fight are real men when they do not fight. And they calculate, that's my brother and he don't know no damn better. This life is like defensive driving. You got to protect your own brother from himself by you making sure you don't hurt him. You got to protect your sister from yourself by making sure you don't hurt her. I wear this eye because no matter how much child support that a woman may want to put on a brother, which I have none. No matter how much your brother's scheme on your demise and are jealous, you always remember what the mythic apperception of primeval man has taught us. <clears throat> that the manhood was never truly lost and no was the vision. Only when we gave into the temptation, we believe it was gone. But when it was restored, they had to learn that they had it still. Despite the physical aspects of it being taken. And that's what fighting amongst your brother does. It makes you attempt to gain possession of something you feel you lost. When the whole while you still have it. I just feel a way, people. I just feel away. I'm highly emotional, but not reactionary. I'm hurt. I'm hurt. <clears throat> I'm super hurt. Because <clears throat> even as this is going on, our brothers and sisters are still doing videos speaking negative about each other. <clears throat> I'm doing a call out. I'm saying join the community. If you're under 18, you're good with me. You ain't gotta pay for nothing. 
We give you free sewing classes, crochet classes, cooking classes, political science classes, organized classes. Get your licensing. <clears throat> All my security. Got to have eight hours, 16 hours training. Got to have legal firearms, legal. Bulletproof vest. Y'all know how I roll. Any of you that know me or show up to any of my events, <clears throat> I got my own fucking military when I move. That's why I stay humble. That's why I don't carry myself like an enemy combatant. I don't agree with the looting. I think it, it takes our attention away from the brother that passed. Piece of the family of that brother Floyd. He's not the first and he certainly won't be the last. <clears throat> we want to organize. Some Negro hit me up. I know you got to get your money, P, but I'm that dude. I'm a king. So I said, you have no problem paying $5 a month. You're a king. $19.99 a month, $5 a week. You're a king. You just said you're a king. You can do $5 a week. And with that attitude, you count in my pockets. But with all the free classes and opportunities, ask somebody that's in my stock class. Ask somebody. They done made their money back several times over. Ask anybody. If you're in that chat, let the people know. Because as a community, we have to have a signature for what we make money off of. So when you join our community, our responsibility is to make sure at the highest level, you know how to make money off of real estate, more especially in the case of tax lien and tax deeds, and you know how to make money off of the stock market. They say, oh, you supporting white businesses. No, I invest the same day and I take my money out the same day. I invested in body cams today and ammunition. I'm aware of current events and I knew those stocks would double and triple. And I took my money right out right after. This is what I teach my people. Because the revolution needs funding. Because if we're going to show up, we're going to need to rent out some vans and some damn buses or own them. <clears throat> if 10,000 people join and pay $5 a week, that's $2 million dollars every 10 months what is it we can't do for ourselves that's why we call it SARS not severe acute respiratory syndrome we take the negative and make it a positive self-administering reparations scientifically you want a goddamn stimulus check <laughs> when it's time to organize you're gonna want someone to have your back and everybody's gonna say we tapped out we ain't got no money I've been there. You get to the meeting, and the second it's time for some money to come out so we can organize effectively, we ain't got it. The second you have to appoint leadership to the money, how much are they keeping? That's what we do. But anyone that follows me know I ain't no stranger to making my bread. I'm good money. I don't have to risk my life to deal with this shit. I just can't help it. Because this is in me. No matter how much I attempt to move away from it, I can't. The revolution needs funding. <laughs> Y'all can play yourself if you want. It needs funding. I just don't understand for the life of me. We look at the pyramids in Giza. And we see Khufu Cafe and Minkuare. And we say the three pyramids, Khufu Cafe and Minkuare, is aligned with the belt of Orion. Anitak, Anilam, and Mintaka. We say that the Nile River Valley, the Nile River Valley, the longest river in the world, going through Africa, is in fact created by man. Because we always make sure we live by water. And it's in alignment with the Milky Way. We see the pyramidal structures around the world on the northern tropic of Cancer. Most pyramidal structures around the world is on a 32 degree Northern Tropic of Cancer, line of latitude. We say we built that without telescopes, without microscopes. Wonders of the world they still don't understand to this day. We say we built the Sphinx, that lion, to be in alignment with the Leo constellation. 
without the help of a telescope or a microscope because they said that didn't get created until the white man came. And then we can't afford to get the hell out the goddamn projects. We say we created all that shit. But then we can't afford $5 a week. Now we tapping out. Well, goddammit, don't join. Because you ain't God enough, apparently. You fucking God until you got to put $5 a week to save yourself. We got a library in our community. We got our own language in our community. We got our own dress in our community. And people make fun. Oh, look at your headdress. Oh, look at your... Sim it's culture. Who the fuck are you? You make fun of culture all the fucking time. You still fucking clown after all these years. You still want to be a fucking clown. You always want to fucking make fun of something. But you're mad. Because the second you're able to identify somebody, you grow insecure because you don't know who the fuck you are. I dare to be different. I dare to have a culture. You ain't got, what's the culture of an African American? We knew Covenant SARS. We're American Africans of the diaspora. Who are you? You African American? <clears throat> Mayweather said some deep shit to me the other night as we talked about pro black issues. Shout out to Mayweather taking care of the family of Brother Floyd that died. Shout out to him for helping them out. But Mayweather said something very powerful <clears throat> two nights ago, like 3 a.m. in the morning. He said, when I, when, I was a, when I was an Olympian and I was boxing in the Olympics, they called me an American when I'm fighting for this country. When they want to separate us and play the game, we are African Americans. <clears throat> they don't want us to be attached to this. You go to war, you're an American. You do their bidding, you do something for them, you're an American. Nobody else does their nationality change. They do that shit to us. That's why we in New Covenant, we recognize ourselves as American Africans of the diaspora. What the hell is an African American? <clears throat> Let me ask you. What is the cultural dish of an African American? McDonald's? What is it that you guys eat? What's your juice? What's your flag as an African-American? Because Polish-Americans have a flag in Poland. French-Americans. And I mean, in fact, anybody that's draft picked from another country that's not black, they just call them like it is. They just call them Americans. They do this with us. What is the cultural dish of an African-American? Hmm? What is the music of an African American? The one that they control? That if we want to get into social political themes, it's not going to sell and they're not going to put no money behind it. But if I want to talk about drugging my women, disrespecting my sisters, and going into a fratricidal war with my brothers, then, <laughs> then, that's my music, that's my culture. What is the culture of an African American? What's the religion of an African American? Christianity? <coughs> Judaism? Hebrew is like, it's like, what the hell was you doing before this white man took your ass? What was you doing? And some of you don't even realize many of us was already here. They sell you on this whitewash Native American shit. They in your reservations. The original Native Americans were blackening you. On the old coinage of America, they used to have Sacagawea there. Study Sacagawea. Study Ben York. Study Old York. And see what the original Native Americans looked like. I gave you references. You are native to America, the continent. You were already here. In 459 AD, the Omex carried their rubber trees over here to America. Mixed in with the Eskimos and produce your first offspring of Native Americans. Talk to me. We can't win this war if you don't got knowledge yourself. What is the food of an African American? You should know your genetic affinity. 
You should know if you come from West Africa or East Africa, most likely. So you can eat foods that correspond with your DNA because that's called gene food consistency. We teach you about this. Y'all gotta wake up. You get in class, I teach class every week. I got other teachers, student teachers. And I want other brothers and sisters to become student teachers, master teachers. This is your community. Add words to the dictionary. Teach classes on the language. Create holidays after yourself and after mine. <clears throat> you know you ain't got no culture. Because when you practice culture, the money stays in that circle. When a Jew practice the Sabbath, Shabbat, or the Sabbath, and he breaks his fast and he eats some challah bread, the money stays in that circle. When a Muslim tells you about Prophet Muhammad and the angel Gabriel and how you can smell the sweet smell of musk, Frank and myrrh, right after that he'll tell you it'll be $9.99. He sells you the oils. And when you got to make a hundred rakaats or prepare for Ramadan, he got the rugs already there. And you Negroes are in there and you spend your money proudly. Fine. But what is the religion of that African-American? Because when he practices his religion, the money should stay amongst his kind. When that African-American gets married, the suit he buys isn't from black people. The wedding ring probably was made from child slavery in Africa. The God he gets married under is foreign and introduced to him by the white man. The state creates a marriage certificate that has a QCIP on it, which is a Committee on Uniform Securities Identification Procedure. And the fact that it's a security means that it's a paper certificate that attests to ownership and equity, as in the case of a stock or ownership of a bond, as in the case of a debt obligation, which has tradable derivatives. Which means that you are property of the state as a couple, and if you owe too much property taxes, they won't even allow you to have a divorce. Is this the culture of the African American that thought he joined in perfect union with his woman under God, that if he doesn't pay X amount of taxes, he can't divorce? That's your culture, right? That's why I said we suffer from an acculturation process. We have to get organized. We don't organize amongst the disorganized because anything can happen under those circumstances. Do yourself a favor and don't go outside tomorrow. Because they got soldiers ready to kill the disorganized who's just wild emotional. Don't know how to shoot a gun. Don't know nothing about self-defense. Don't know what to do if they do get shot. Don't know what to do if there's a stampede and people start running in the opposite direction. You did your part. You managed to survive. Get the freak out of that situation because too much people's hands is in those riots. Everybody ain't in there for the same cause you in there for. Get the hell out of there. <clears throat> you're not losing and you're not proving anything to anyone by dying and leaving your family handicapped and mourning about you. We're already mourning this brother's death. We don't need no more of you to go out there and get killed while other people are foolishly stealing. <clears throat> what is the culture of the African American? I have no idea. It's not attached to anything. His God don't look like him. And when he makes his God looks like him, it's debatable. Because he only took someone else's God and changed his damn complexion. His food gives him diabetes. His food gives him cancer. His food gives him high blood pressure. How the hell... Are you created on planet Earth to eat food that would destroy you? Does that even make sense? Why is your food giving you diabetes? Isn't it your food? You wouldn't have made it this far under these circumstances. It's called gene food consistency. You eat food based on your genetic affinity. Your apples from a different country are different from apples, let's say, in Thailand. A Thailand apple doesn't look like an apple in Jamaica. A red Ecuadorian app, uh, banana, a red Ecuadorian banana doesn't look like a baby banana <coughs> in the Caribbean. 
Mother Nature takes samples of your DNA every day through your urine, your fecal matter, your saliva. And it understands, it does a consensus and says, this is what the people indigenous to this land will need. I'm going to bear food that would empower the people specifically from this land. That's what nature does. So you have to eat foods that you have a genetic affinity to. School will not teach you food, clothing, and shelter, which is what all adults need to know. So by the time you graduate at 18, you know how to make your own food, nor do you understand food. You know how to sew, crochet, clothing. You can't make your own if you wind up being broke. And you don't know how to even fill out your first homeowner's application. You don't know what a mortgage hypothecation is. You don't know what a uniform commercial code is. You don't know what a financing statement is. You don't know what an advantage score is, a FICO score is. You don't know what check system spelled with an X is. You don't know what a 609 letter is. You don't know what Lexus Nexus is, both spelled with an I. But you're supposed to be a functional adult. From pre-K to 12th grade, 14 years of schooling. And you don't know how to facilitate your own food, clothing, or shelter properly. And you don't learn about credit until you mess it up and then you have to fix it. You work a nine to five, eight hours. You work a nine to five, eight hours. Daylight, if you there, I'll just put you, put your name out there, and I'll, I'll get you. You work a nine to five, eight hours. Takes you an hour to go to work, and an hour to come back from work. Most people, it's about ten hours now. Most people, they say you gotta sleep eight hours. Most people sleep around six hours. That's sixteen hours now. That's two thirds of your damn life you creating for somebody else. One third of your life belongs to you. Only one third. And with that one third of your life, you're going to take the time out to wash your ass so you can be clean to go to work. <laughs> you're going to take the time out to get some rest so you could go to work. <coughs> you're going to take the time out to eat so you can have the energy to go to work. So you eat, you sleep, so you could build someone else's dream. And school doesn't even prepare you to do anything else but to build somebody else's dream. You gotta be a lucky lottery winner. All you gotta do is work and sleep and that's two thirds of your life. Only one third of your life belongs to you. And in that one third, you gotta squeeze in food, pardon me, you gotta squeeze in <clears throat> eating, socializing with your child or your children if you have, socializing with your friends for sanity and if you have a significant other or time to have one, you gotta clean, you got to be able to read, meditate, pray, vacate. Well, with one third of your life left, you're going to have to sacrifice some of those things. That's going to be reading. Don't have time for that. You're going to be too tired. Meditating, contemplating, studying, traveling. That's all out the window. Maybe you travel once or twice a year so you get beat in your head and purchase a timeshare. Maybe sell your week when you realize I should just work that week. So you got to sacrifice the incorporeal intangible spiritual elements that you need as your impetus to want to exist and by the time you come home your children come home the times conflict you're not even there to raise your children if we did five dollars a week 10,000 people strong that agree that we need to live for and by each other. It'd be $2 million every 10 months. It's enough to employ our own, buy vacant houses, and create schools out of them. Create our own hospital, not the clinics. They don't got no funding. They can't give us no reparations. But the Obama administration found millions of dollars 
to incorporate into healthcare. So we could afford to exterminate or murder our children in the form of abortion. They found millions of dollars so we could abort our children. But can't find no goddamn money as a form of recompense for slavery. And you say, I'm mad. And I'm screaming for no goddamn reason. But oh yeah, you want justice instead of revenge. You want revenge when your brother do something wrong. You want to see him hurt. You want to send him Texas and let him know what you're going to do when you see him. You want to do YouTube film and challenge him to a physical fight. But you don't want to challenge this white man to a physical fight. You want to challenge your brother, do you? You want to be in your goddamn drawers and, and kicking people and challenge them to kick fights. But you ain't got shit to say to this white man. You so angry with your own people. You so angry. And you, you profess, I'm only doing this because we got to attack our people first. You fucking coward. Like everybody that's rioting everywhere else except for in the goddamn community where the perp exists, where the op exists. Y'all talking about y'all ops? You ain't no goddamn op. Probably phone operators, the way y'all use that goddamn phone so much. Yeah, y'all the ops. <laughs> Let a Negro have a problem with another brother. He gonna be in selfie mode. Tell him what he gonna do at what time and what address he gonna meet. But this white man do something to us. They still got white picket fences in their community. Little Toto, the little dog is running back and forth still. I'm not saying go into white communities and terrorize them. I'm saying let's protest in their communities where their villains exist. Because their neighbors are gonna say, yo, if y'all gonna be doing this kind of fuck shit with your policing, <clears throat> then don't be living in our community. Cause this shit's starting to impact our lives personally. What the hell are you doing? Destroying your neighborhood. What the hell are you doing? Not being within a certain mile radius of the neighborhood. <coughs> where the op exists. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. I can't believe it. Listen. I love you brothers and sisters. Make sure you share the video. It's part of the revolution. It costs you nothing. Wake our people up. Join the movement. Get your real estate classes. Get your holistic mathematics classes. Get your stock market classes. Get your political science classes. Get your organizational skills classes. Get your disaster preparedness classes. Learn how to heal yourself. Go in the hospitals is packed with so-called sick, sick people. You got to learn how to give birth to your own. Attach yourself to a community that if something happens to you, you can guarantee you ain't gotta look for random help. You have organized help. Cause we keeping that same energy the gangs keep, just with more knowledge of self and kind. And no banging on each other. Cause when you join the community, goddamn, you're gonna have to sign an oath that from this day forward, you're gonna reconcile within yourself that there's some people that's hell bent on being your enemy, but you will not be an enemy onto them. Because if someone has cancer, you don't say, I'm gonna get that bitch. She got cancer, let's beat her ass. You don't do that. If someone has diabetes, you're like, yo, son, he got diabetes, we need to run down on him and clap that nigga. Because we understand those people are sick, so we have empathy. Well, mental health, it's the sickness of the mind. And some people have cancer of the mind, but you want to put hands on them. And some of them have diabetes of the mind, and you want to put hands on them. But what you got to recognize is, it's a mental illness. And they have no control of themselves, and it can be contagious. It makes you want to go crazy. And if they don't want treatment, and they don't recognize that they're sick, 
You got to deal with them the way you deal with people dying from cancer. Deal with them the way you deal with people that have diabetes. Deal with them the way you deal with people who have lupus. Understand that they are sick. And don't attack them because of their sickness. In this particular case, the sickness is cancer of the mind, lupus of the mind, diabetes of the mind. We cannot prioritize ourselves. We cannot put ourselves at the top of the list when it comes to war. I know many of you Negroes scared to freaking death. <laughs> so I'm talking about organizing. But what I'm saying is you would like to know that if things get out of control, ain't nothing but a group text, nor a mass email, or a special chant, if need be, where a group of people who share in the same discipline and understanding will come out on your behalf, properly represent, and do their best to peacefully resolve the issue. And also be prepared to defend themselves at all costs. But what we're not going to do is film one of our own dying. So you be scared if you want. But like I said, the one thing we can't stand is a black man that wants to be a white man and the only thing we can't stand more than a black man that wants to be a white man is a black man that wants to be a white woman clean up my brothers clean up get your act together it's time to tighten up do yourselves all a favor fall back from all that that riot tension, share the video, let everyone know, stop it. It's a setup. They left the bricks around. They let the buildings burn. They probably burned the damn buildings themselves. You can't trust large crowds that you didn't help organize. You see too many races and everybody getting involved. It's like, yo, hold on, fam. Y'all wasn't showing all that love before this dude died. Something's a little tricky, a little sketchy. I ain't knocking nobody that want to help, and I ain't say all oh, white people are bad. I certainly know some white folks that make me look and say, well, goddamn, some of you exist. But I still want to see one of them bang before I'll really be convinced. Nonetheless, I don't think it's hard to find good people in every race. I just understand my plight and where my allegiance belongs first and foremost. Too many people's hands is in this business right now. Fall back, reorganize, they will kill another one of us. Be more organized when that happens. Unfortunately, that's the case. Our membership will not be praying for this damn white man to get off the hook easy and be in prison. You take it how you want. Our community is not looking to ensue anybody violently. We only looking to properly defend ourselves like we say to our own brother and sister. When I see you, it's gonna be on sight. That's what we say to each other. We say, yo, when I see you nigga, it's gonna be on sight. The only thing I ask my people is to keep the same energy. <laughs> That's all I ask, keep that same energy. That same hate you got for yourself, it's nice. Channel it. Like it. Yeah, that. Nigga, I'm going to kill you. Yeah, that. Keep that same energy. Change nigga to maybe cracker. I don't know. Keep that same energy. Well, what I don't want you to do is go out there and recklessly get yourself killed by fighting somebody else's fight. Because this fight right now... Wherever this fight has gone, it's no longer our fight, fall back. Our fight is to get our head in the books, learn how to take care of ourselves, learn how to deal with emergency scenarios, learn how to properly organize. Let's regroup, restructure, 
reorganize and we don't have to ask this man for nothing. Anything we can ask for, we can provide it amongst ourselves. Okay? And you can support us on the outskirts. But damn it, don't come to us when the shit go hit the fan and you see a structure. Because like I said, any of you that see how we move, you can make fun of us for having a headdress. You can make fun of us for wearing our cultural signs and symbols. That's an attestation to our brotherhood and our allegiance to each other. You can make fun of us because of how our language sounds. But there's nothing funny about being disorganized. And it's even more of an atrocity to see the disorganized play the game of being conscious in light of murders. Hey, I just did this post, I'm conscious. Join somebody, stop playing around. You can't do this disorganized. <laughs> You're dealing with an organized killer. You've been practicing this killing for thousands of years. The NYPD, the LAPD, whoever the hell they are, that's not the Ku Klux Klan. That's the Blue Klux Klan. They are the Blue Klux Klan. They are contract killers. That's why out of the thousands of civilian murders that they are responsible for within the last decade, less than 2% have actually been convicted of murder. Check the facts. The only way that can happen is if they have a contract with the state, a contract with the government, and they're given certain subsidies, certain concessions being made to them, certain privileges in the form of murder. Those are contract killers. You cannot take on contract killers disorganized. They've been waiting for the green light to start murdering you. They got the green light today. Trump gave them the green light today. And I understand he's the leader of this country. And I understand he has every right to say we got to stop all this goddamn chaos. We've let the chaos seep into what we're doing. So salute to Donald Trump. He got his plan. But we got to have our own. And you cannot be getting murdered because of his plan. Fall back. Trick they ass into thinking, yo, we're going to come out here and kill some black people. Share this video and let the people know. Share it. Let them know. Don't fall for it. Let them show up and don't see nobody. Take the goddamn curfew and let's organize the best way we can. We've been doing it through this so-called social distancing. Covert martial law. We've been doing it. If you can't handle it, just think about the brothers that's behind the wall in prison. Stay in your goddamn home. And let's build and let's reorganize and let's teach each other. And let's come out more brilliant and wax wise with wisdom than we've ever been before. Let's not be as reactionary. Let's be proactive. Do not fall for the trick and go out there and get yourself killed and handicap your family. And now we'll be talking about this for years to come. It'd be your fault for being so goddamn ignorant and falling for the trap. They couldn't wait for this day to start legally having the right to exterminate you. Like you a goddamn rodent. They can't wait for this day. This was the buildup to the whole coronavirus. I don't give a damn what nobody tell me. Because if they cared that much about the coronavirus, it'd be like, don't riot because everybody's going to get sick. Tell your brother and sister, fall back and send them this video. I love you guys. Be a part of the movement. Share all videos that impart incredible wisdom. Share the video. Join the community. Brotherpolite.com right there. Join New Covenant Sauce. Self-administering reparations scientifically. We ain't got to ask these damn wicked entities for nothing. 
We ain't gotta ask them for nothing. Shit, we done made everybody else rich but ourselves. We ain't gotta ask them for a damn penny. We don't need shit from them. They offer us the hospital where our women lay on their backs against gravity. We can offer you squatting, being in conformity with gravity. So the woman don't die. The mortality rate of black women who have given birth to the world, the progenitors of society, has given birth to everybody else on this planet. Why the hell is she dying the most when it's time to give birth? School education. Most of you in debt searching for a, a, a real good education. And the only thing you got after seven damn years of additional education in college was a job at Kinko's printing paper and now they laid your ass off because of the coronavirus? We got the highest unemployment rate. And we the ones that are working the essential jobs, the jobs that have to be there to help other people and expose ourselves to disease. And they don't take care of us when our job is to take care of other people. And somehow we're dying the most in cities we don't populate the most. When it comes to this virus, are you kidding me? We, yeah, yeah, we don't need nothing from them. Oh, we're going to take a test to see if we got the coronavirus. Oh, shit. We just found out the test for the coronavirus gives you the coronavirus. When you're going to realize you don't need them? Every time you go to them, you come back with an itch or a scratch. Every time you go to them and you come back, you get sick or you die in the damn hospital at their hands. Or your belly get cut open. You need a C-section. Nobody says, yo, the doctor got over $10,000 to cut you open. Oh, really? What does he get if, if you give birth normally? Absolutely nothing. There's no advance. There's no extra money. You don't need him. They need you. The biggest trick they play in the book is to treat you like shit so you can start considering that you don't have no self-worth. We're in an abusive relationship with this white man. And he's been beating us for so long, we start thinking we need him. And that was hard to get out of it. Because we've been with this white man for so long. It's like, how would life be without him? So we hate him in one instance, but shit, what are we going to do without him? I'm here to save you from that white man. He's abusive. I'm here to save you from him. He is abusive. I'm like your homegirl that's like, yo... Leave that nigga. You don't need him. It's <laughs> a better man out there. I'm him. Get out that goddamn abusive relationship with this white man. And if you're a good Caucasian out there, don't be offended. Don't. And if you are, I don't give a fuck. Because white man is a metaphor. For any race in opposition to our race. Just call him the white man. Since he's at the top of the list of all the death and destruction on planet Earth. We just call him white man for short. So you might be an Asian motherfucker that hate us. We just call you the white man for short. I don't fuck who you are. You might be uh, a Hindu racist. We just call you the white man for short. You might be an Arab racist. Call me a Zinji on your time and terms. We just call you the white man for short. Because he caught more bodies than anybody else on planet Earth. So we just call you the white man for short. It's just a metaphor for anybody in opposition to the black race. That's what we mean by white man. And in some instances, the damn brother is a white man. We need a genetic colonic. This white man is all in our DNA. Creating self-hate amongst us. We don't know if we black or we white because we got his DNA as a slave master. And we just like our father. And our father hated black people and we start hating ourselves. <clears throat> oh my, we need a colonic. We need a genetic colonic. Let me get off here. <laughs> I know some of y'all getting scared. Y'all getting scared. <laughs> Y'all getting scared. Let me get off of here. See? Y'all think I, I changed. I, no, I play the game and I make my bread. 
I make my bread. Sag my pants a little bit, not a lot. Wear my hat backwards a little bit, not a lot. So I can last this fucking long. Yeah, I live in Beverly Hills. But I stick my neck out and let you know what time I'm on and I don't hide it from nobody. All my celeb friends know what type of time I'm on. I don't change for nobody. And fuck you if you want to separate yourself from me thinking this white man give a fuck about you. And then when he ends your damn career, now you want to be conscious. Don't come over here. <clears throat> fuck with me while you popping. Don't connect with me when your shit is on tilt. And now you, you have this epiphany. You either find Jesus Christ or you find the conscious community. Fuck out of here. You know worth was now. Now your shit is trash. Get the fuck out of here. Go back to that white man that had you thinking, yo, let me not attach myself to the revolutionary motherfucker. Because I don't want him to be mad at me. <clears throat> shit. I drive my Rolls Royce. I make my money. Ain't nobody stopping that shit. Because I'm, I'm, I'm just that. But I'm always going to be pro-black. I'm always going to be revolutionary. And I ain't changing that shit for nobody. This me all the time. I'm on this time all the time. When it's time to get that paper, I may not have all of this going on. <clears throat> like you're not going to wear basketball shorts and a jersey to a corporate meeting. Your wardrobe is just that. It's a wardrobe. Peace and black power, family. And as we say in our language, Iluvu. That's by, but it also means perpetual success. Peace and black power. Iluvu. Aswud Gador. That's black power in our language. Aswud Gador. You post the road to Ardo. So Aswud Gador. Iluvu. You could tell who enslaved you by the language that you speak. And you could tell who freed you. Equally by the new language you speak. We, we need to have autonomous control. Aswud Gadur. Black power. Iluvu. Perpetual success. I love you all. Peace.